Are you struggling with steep turns? If you are, then you're just like everyone else out there. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a steep turn and I'm also going to share three secrets that are going to fix those steep turns if they suck. Welcome to pre-pilot training. I'm Josh and I'm headed to the practice area today to do some steep turns. Before we get into my three secrets that are going to fix your steep turns, let's take a quick look at how to perform a proper steep turn. In a nutshell, a steep turn is nothing more than a 360 degree turn or multiple 360 degree turns at a bank angle between 45 and 60 degrees. For my students out there working on your private pilot certificate, the Airman Certification Standards say that your bank angle needs to be approximately 45 degrees. And the word approximately is extremely important. We're going to be coming back to that when we start looking at one of my secrets. Now, speaking of the Airman Certification Standards, this is how you're going to be graded on your check ride. The examiner is going to expect you to have a basic understanding of this stuff right here. They're also going to expect you to make good risk management decisions, and you also need to be able to perform the maneuver at a certain level. First things first, you've got to clear the area. Typically I teach students to do one set of clearing turns before they start performing maneuvers. Then the rest of the time, just make sure you're actively clearing. Actively clearing means that you're constantly looking outside for other aircraft, and this includes getting your passengers and the examiner involved in the clearing process. During the check ride, you're the pilot in command. If I'm making a left hand turn, when I look left I say, clear left. This lets the examiner know that I'm actively clearing. When I turn right, I like to ask the question every time, clear right? Not only does it show him that you're constantly clearing, but it also shows him that you're using all the resources you have available, which is good risk management. Okay, after we've cleared the area, we need to establish the proper airspeed. According to the ACS, this should be the manufacturer's recommended airspeed not to exceed VA, or maneuvering airspeed. This is important to keep in mind, because if we're below VA, we'll actually stall the airplane before we could possibly exceed the load factor for the aircraft. So if we're below VA, we're more concerned about an accelerated stall than we are an over-G. If your airplane's flight manual recommends an airspeed to perform your steep turns, that's what you should be using during the maneuver. If there isn't one, pick an airspeed close to VA, but not to exceed VA. The maneuvering airspeed for this aircraft is 112 knots, so I'll be doing my steep turns at 100 knots. And during the maneuver, we need to maintain that airspeed throughout the entire maneuver, plus or minus 10 knots. If my airspeed builds up to 111 knots or falls to 89 knots, technically I fail the maneuver. Now the trick to getting your airspeed perfect is to set a specific power setting. Then, as you start the maneuver, increase your power about 100 RPM. Then just leave it for the rest of the maneuver. And that's all you need to do to keep your airspeed under control. And while you're working on getting your airspeed perfect, you should also be working on your altitude and establishing a good heading. If you stay at this altitude, are you going to run into any terrain or towers? If so, use common sense and pick a better altitude. To pass this maneuver on your check ride, you have to maintain your altitude plus or minus 100 feet throughout the entire maneuver. Next, make sure you choose a good heading. Pay attention to airspace and the terrain around you. Now, if you really want, you can use random headings like 210 or 150 to start the maneuver but it's a lot easier to see the giant letters on your compass card, so I highly recommend starting at one of the cardinal headings instead of a random heading. The heading you finish the maneuver on should be within 10 degrees of the heading you started on. Okay, now we're ready to start the maneuver. We've established our airspeed of 100 knots. We've established our heading, and we've established our altitude. Take your time here. There's no rush to get set up. If you rush and start 75 feet off your altitude, then that's going to make things that much harder. Now typically the way I like to do steep turns is to make one 360 degree turn in one direction, then I'll make another 360 degree turn all the way back around the other direction. Now once I'm established on a good heading, altitude, and airspeed, I'm ready to get started. And I like to slowly roll into my 45 degree turn, then gently increase the backstick pressure on the yoke. Now before we continue, I want to talk about this really quickly because if you can understand this concept, this will help you to understand the control inputs you need to make to keep yourself right on your altitude. Now as you may remember, the way we get an airplane to turn is by tilting the aircraft on its side and creating lift horizontally instead of creating lift that goes straight up. So in order to turn, we need to pull back on the yoke more than what we were doing in straight and level flight because we're basically trying to climb the airplane sideways. Well, how much do we need to pull back on the yoke? 
I want to show you something that you probably studied for the written exam, but you may have thought was completely worthless until now. And as you can see from this chart, our load factor is supposedly directly related to our bank angle. But the truth is, load factor is only related to our bank angle if we're pulling back on the yoke and creating that horizontal component of lift. If we just turn the airplane at an angle and we don't pull back on the yoke, not only will the airplane not turn the way it should, but we'll also start to descend because we reduce the amount of vertical lift that our airplane is producing to trade for horizontal lift. So to keep our airplane from descending, we need to pull G's. And this chart shows us exactly how many G's we need to pull in order to keep us from descending. As you can see from this chart, if we're at a bank angle of 60 degrees, we need to pull at least two G's if we want to make a turn without descending. Now the interesting thing about this is that the military regularly uses the 60 and 2 turn during a lot of maneuvers. But all you're trying to do today is master steep turns, and we're only operating at 45 degrees for those. So according to this chart, we need to pull a little less than 1.5 G's to keep our altitude. In fact, they've updated this chart and it looks like if we're at a bank angle of 45 degrees, we need to pull exactly 1.414 G's. Now why do I bring all this up? Nobody cares, do they? Well, you should, because if you pull harder than 1.414 G's, you're going to start climbing or start slowing down. But if you don't pull at least 1.414 G's, then you're going to either start descending or you're going to start speeding up, or both. So it's extremely important that we pull back on the yoke enough to where we maintain our altitude, but not too much where we'll start to climb instead. Now, I know that most of the training planes out there don't have a G-meter, so it's impossible to tell exactly how many G's you're pulling. But when you're practicing your seat turns, try to always pull back the same amount on the yoke. This will give you a good starting point to work from. If you find that you're constantly descending during your seat turns, then you may need to pull back a little bit more. If you're constantly climbing during your seat turns, then you may be pulling too hard. Every time you go practice, you should be getting a little closer and closer to nailing 1.414 G's. Okay, for my friends in a Cessna 172, a lot of instructors teach three slaps of nose up trim as you're beginning the turn. And that's a trick that definitely does work. But I recommend that you don't use this trick because you're not going to have that option in every airplane that you go fly. And if you pull back by hand instead, you're going to develop a better feel for what it takes to keep the airplane stable during a steep turn. Alright, so we've started our steep turn. And as VFR pilots, we're mainly looking outside and we're taking quick peeks inside at our bank angle and our altitude, then back outside. Then we're taking quick peeks at our airspeed, then back outside. Then we're taking quick peeks at our ball to make sure we're coordinated, then going right back outside. We're dragging that spinner across the horizon. The three main things you should be focusing on are putting that spinner where it needs to go, making sure your bank angle is about 45 degrees, and taking quick glances at your altitude. Your airspeed should be okay as long as you set the proper power setting. But in a minute, I'm gonna share one of my secrets that'll keep you from looking at the airspeed indicator quite as much. As you start getting close to your original heading, start bringing that into your cross check. You need to roll out wings level about half of your bank angle. And don't sit there and think about that math too long. For private pilot steep turns, that just means we need to start rolling out about 20 degrees before our heading. As you begin to roll out, gently release that backstick pressure at the same rate that you're bringing your wings back to level. If you did use nose up trim, you're going to need to fight against your trim and push down as you level out to keep you from climbing. As you reach wings level, we should be right on our heading, and this is where we should be reversing our turn and going in the opposite direction. Once again, slowly roll into the turn, gently working towards 1.414 G's. You already have that 100 extra RPM in, and the reason we put that in was to counteract the increased angle of attack that we caused by pulling more G-forces. And once you've established that 45 degree bank angle, we're back to looking outside. And the horizon's going to be in a little bit different spot this time if you're not sitting directly in the middle of the aircraft. We're still dragging our spinner across the horizon and taking quick glances inside at our altitude, at our bank angle and our airspeed, and the ball. Don't forget the ball. Now it's important that you keep the ball centered during this entire maneuver because that means we're staying coordinated. And how much rudder we need depends on which direction you're turning. Because of the left turning tendencies in most training aircraft, you'll find that during a left turn, the weight of your foot is almost enough to keep that ball centered. During a right turn, you need a good inch or two of rudder pressure. Just make gentle corrections as you're making the turn. This will make it a lot easier. 
but once again, our eyes should be mostly outside as we're making the turn. With quick glances inside, focusing on altitude, bank angle, and ball, and occasionally airspeed. Then as we're getting close to our original heading, we should start the rollout 20 degrees in front of our heading, while gently decreasing our backstick pressure. And as we roll out, we should be right on our heading, right on our altitude, and right on our airspeed. Now that you know the basics of the maneuver, it's time to share my three secrets for perfect steep turns. And the reason I call these secrets is because I wasn't taught any of these during my private pilot training. Okay, so for my first secret for perfect steep turns is to neutralize the ailerons as you begin the maneuver. The Air Force calls this flying the T. Before I explain what that means, I want to ask you a question. What happens if I'm coasting down a hill in my car and I let off the gas halfway down the hill? Will I stop right here or will I continue to coast down the hill? I know that's a stupid question. Of course you're going to continue to coast down the hill. But what do you think happens when you roll into a turn with your training aircraft and you hit 45 degrees angle of bank and you just bring that yoke back to the middle position? You haven't stopped your airplane from continuing to roll in that direction. And the airplane is going to continue to roll in that direction unless you do something to stop it. This is why you need to neutralize the ailerons as you hit 45 degrees angle of bank. And to do that, you'll just need to very briefly put in a tiny bit of opposite aileron to keep the airplane from continuing to roll in that direction. Now the reason why the Air Force calls this flying the T is because if you were to look at the top of a control stick as opposed to a yoke, what you'd see is one movement to start the turn, a movement in the opposite direction to neutralize the ailerons, then the movement back to increase the g-forces to keep the aircraft from descending. It's a very intentional maneuver to keep you from continuing to roll, which would cause you to descend immediately after you've started the maneuver. And if you're struggling with steep turns and you've noticed that you're losing altitude immediately after starting the maneuver, it's very likely that this is your problem. And that brings up secret number two, sideways controls. Now that your lift vector is turned to the side, how do you think you want to control the altitude of your aircraft? And I guarantee you a lot of people are trying to control their altitude with the elevator still. And that's not actually what you want to do. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, we do need to pull back on the yoke to keep ourselves from descending. But the way we should be controlling our altitude once we're in the turn is with ailerons, not elevator. Take a look back at the Airman Certification Standards. Notice that our bank angle needs to be approximately 45 degrees. It doesn't say exactly 45 degrees, and the reason for this is because you need to control your altitude with your bank angle, not your elevator. Your lift vector is turned to the side. If you're pulling more G's, you might climb a tiny bit more, but you're essentially tightening your turn radius by doing that. And you're increasing your angle of attack to do that as well, which will slow you down. And you definitely don't want to do that. We need to maintain our airspeed, plus or minus 10 knots, and pulling more G's is going to bleed off our airspeed. If we use ailerons instead, we're essentially making sideways turns, which will have a lot bigger impact on our altitude than the elevator will. Now, I believe that it is possible to pass your private pilot checkride by controlling your altitude with elevator and not ailerons. I know that because I did it. But if you're a commercial student pilot who's watching this, who's all of a sudden struggling because you have to use approximately 50 degrees of bank for the checkride, this is why. You're trying to control your altitude with elevator instead of ailerons and you need to quit that right now. Your lift vector is sideways, so you need to climb and descend with ailerons. Let me say this one other way so I know that you guys are getting this. When you're doing your steep turns, you're controlling your altitude with your bank angle, and it only takes two or three degrees to climb or descend for what you need during that turn. Okay, this one's kind of interesting, and it's just something I've kind of picked up along the way. The second altimeter. Oddly enough, you can actually tell you're descending without even looking at your altimeter, just by listening to the sound of your engine. This sound is a hint and a half that you're losing altitude. Give yourself a little bit of opposite aileron, then glance down at the altimeter. I think you'll be surprised at how often you can fix your altitude with just the sound of the engine before you even see the change on your altimeter. And guess what? If you're hearing that sound, there's a good chance you're also increasing your airspeed as well. And once again, we don't want to do that. We're trying to maintain our airspeed. All right, now that you know how to perform the maneuver and my three secrets for perfect steep turns, let's see all these skills together in motion. All right, so about 2,400 RPM is going to hold my uh, 100 knots. So clear left. 
I'm going to roll coordinated into this bank at 45 degrees, the bump of power, and then I'm going to neutralize those ailerons. Notice how intentional I was with that. Now I'm just pulling about 1.414 Gs, maintaining about 45 degrees, and I'm just rolling through this turn right here. Everything's looking good. I'm controlling my altitude with bank angle. And I'm just maintaining that 1.14 Gs. I might be getting a little faster. I'm going to pull just a little more. All right. We're looking for 20 degrees to roll out. So somewhere right in there. Went just went through my wake turbulence there a little bit. Rolling out while gently increase, or decreasing the backseat pressure. And then rolling back into that turn. All right. Neutralize the ailerons there. And now I'm just gently... Pulling back about 1.41 G's. Getting a little slow, so I'm going to release some of that back stick pressure. Staying coordinated, I'm a little off there. A little bit more right rudder. And there's 20 degrees to roll out. All right. We are maybe three knots slow, right on our altitude, and right on a westbound heading there. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Free Pilot Training. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, would you please smash the like button for me, and you might also see what other videos I have available. I'm sure they're going to help you out if this one did. I'll see you over there. See ya. No. No. Oh, shoot. Lost one of the propellers off this thing. Please don't tell anybody. Roach, you're not going to believe this. I just bought it free pilot training. I'm going to keep on watching.